In this video you will learn what elements a game needs to have to look professional. And these are not just regular tips like making a great mechanic, drawing stunning art and adding sounds. No, this video is about smaller things that often get overlooked, but without them a game just feels incomplete. Interested? Continue watching! Hey, hey, it's Tomara here. Have you ever wondered what makes a game look good, professional, like it was made by a game studio or a skilled solo game dev, and not like it was made by an amateur? It's not about the bugs, for sure, because even big game studios have bugs in their games. Then what is it about, really? The scale of the game, graphics, effects, all important things that can certainly contribute to the channel of feeling of the game. But what are the smaller things that even an indie game dev can implement in a game to make it look professional? That's exactly what we're gonna find out in this video. I did some research on this topic and here is my opinion as a game developer and just someone who loves to play video games. Server connection This is the number one thing I see in professionally made games. It can be represented in different forms like global multiplayer, visiting, trading with other players, or as much as a simple leaderboard. The point is, your game has to go online, and here's why. Playing with other people brings even more fun. You probably know the success story of Among Us. A huge value to that success contributing multiplayer feature. People needed communication with others. I know a lot of times when players became friends because they were engaged in some sort of activity together. Moreover, whole communities have been built because of teamwork and games. Sometimes the gameplay requires multiple players, sometimes it's just easier to play when you're not alone. And speaking of community, I will leave a link to my Discord server. It's an amazing and active community of game devs where you can chat, get help, find resources, and even share your work. I spend there some time daily chatting with everyone there, letting you know how I'm doing, so you're welcome to join! The second thing that multiplayer does is increases interest in your game. It is especially noticeable in simple games with one single mechanic and the high score model. You know the term hyper-casual game. Without this relatively small detail, the game would be just too plain. Now, when you see another player's high score, it makes you wonder, can I do better than that? Can you actually beat that score? And here you are, starting another round of the game. Another important part of any game is a secure saving system. And one of the best ways to make it is to save things on the server side. It prevents players from cheating and also brings possibilities for new mechanics, like visiting other players, leaderboards, etc. Multiplayer is actually one of the things that I want to learn how to do and then share with you all. I know you want this because you asked me under one of my videos from my Making Heyday series. It is a farm game from which I showed you clips just earlier because it has a multiplayer feature. In my series I attempt to replicate this game while teaching you useful things. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Also, let me know in the comments if you ever tried making a game with multiplayer. I'm really curious. Animations One of the things I noticed that significantly changes the appearance of a game is animations. I don't know if it's only my problem, but I always leave these small things till the end of development and then I would just skip them because I would run out of time. But they are actually so important when you want to make a game look smooth and professional. And I'm not talking about the character animations, those are a must in all cases. The game would just look weird without them. I'm talking about little ones that you see in the environment of the game or UI animations. Practically they don't do much for the gameplay or functionality, but the way they impact the overall feeling of the game is amazing. I want to show you an example of why small animations matter and you should definitely spend some time adding those to your game. Not too much time, because they're not the main part of the game, but still. You might recognize this game. This is my dream game, Lost in Athildus, or Leia for short. I have a devlog series about how I've been developing this game. It's still on my channel, so if you want, go check it out. 
Anyways, you can see the floating tags I added, and this slight movement just brings life to the game. Story. Obviously, this is an optional element of a game. Some games practically require it, because just being thrown into the game without no context given can be confusing for new players. Usually, professionally made games have at least a backstory or a few storyline checkpoints that help guide the player. I have seen some indie devs putting the story of the game into its description on the platform that they're publishing it on. And that's okay too, I'm just saying that it would be a nice addition to the game if there was a story inside of it. The simplest version of it would just make slides, like in comics, and if you're willing to take an extra step you can add a voiceover, or if you're feeling fancy you can even make an animation with 3D models. This is especially possible if your game is 3D and you already have all the props for making the clip. By the way, I have another story for you, or rather exciting news. I created a Buy Me A Coffee page. You can support me there so I can continue making these videos for you. And let's move on to the video. UI Of course, any game has some kind of user interface elements, but not every game UI was done right. And this is not just about the appearance of UI. It is also about when and where you should add the UI. You've probably seen these little text messages when you pick up an object or a name displays when you pass by. Adding such little details may seem like a boring task, but it's actually pretty simple. And once you made a tooltip with a pre-made animation like fading or something, it is just a matter of filling out text fields on your objects. But the difference it'll make in the game is pretty noticeable. Another thing that is important but often overlooked by solo game devs is menus. A finished game has to have a menu and some settings, otherwise it looks like a quick game jam entry. The game can be great, implement an amazing mechanic, have stunning graphics, but without a menu it's just not finished. I wouldn't say unprofessional, because obviously if a game itself is engaging, good looking and works well, it would be unfair to just say that it's not professional. But if you went to that much trouble to make a great game, spend a little more time on setting up a proper menu with a fitting UI. Achievements or extras Every game I played, no matter the genre, had some kind of achievement system or extra content. I know this is a common thing to do in the industry and I see the point of it. It's like that extra gift product that you get when you shop and reach some amount. You don't need it, but it's so nice to have it. Actually, if we're talking about the extra levels, they are needed, because when you really like a game, you just want to play more and more. <laughs> As for the achievements, I have seen them literally everywhere. They depend on the main mechanic of your game, of course. In a city builder, that can be something like build X number of houses, make X amount of money, open new territories, etc. In a puzzle game, they could be like find those hidden objects, do these small things like jump on a bed or something. Sometimes players discover them by accident, but then they have this strong urge to complete these achievements and get that extra checkmark bonus. So I really think that the achievement system can be a valuable addition to your game. Well, that's about it for my top 5 things you want to have in a game if you want it to look professional. I'd like to thank all my patrons for supporting me and welcome new members, especially Joaquin Esquivel, Nicholas Stauer, Pauline Serlo, Sakref, Adil Canley, Tomasz Jelinek. I hope you enjoy watching this video, subscribe to my channel, hit that like button and I'll see you next time! Bye!